Well, welcome to Reproduction 1. Okay, we're going to have about four lessons on reproduction, and this one I'm calling Gross Anatomy of the Male Reproductive Tract. So that means what we can see with the naked eye. Macroscopic anatomy is another name for gross anatomy. And I've got this little uh, image here of testicles to show you, I guess, to start out here, gross anatomy. And uh, during the castration process, depending on if you're talking about dogs, cats, horses, whatever, cattle, uh, the testicles sorry, are taken out. There's usually two in the scrotum. We're going to talk about a case where there's not. But I just want to point out that when you take testicles out of most of these animals, the outer covering, often called the tunica albugenia, is very glistening and white. And there's always this other structure that's attached. You can kind of see it's different than the testicle. And this is the epididymis. We'll be spelling that out later. And I'm not sure which testy goes with which one, but you can see we're going to call this the tail of the epididymis, and this one is larger than this. I don't think these were a pair. I think this one was a pair with that one. Okay, before we look at any fancy drawings by medical illustrators, I wanted to show you what I would call the bird's eye view of a generic male reproductive system. I'm going to call it Rod's concept drawing because I've used these in the past somewhat. I remember drawing like the digestive tract to show you the concepts. Uh, promise not to laugh though, okay, because I'm going to bring it off from the ceiling here and it kind of looks like some insect, but okay, don't laugh. Man, that does, doesn't it? An insect, but it's not. And let me orientate you. This is like a bird's eye view of a generic reproductive tract. I'm going to be labeling parts. But basically, this is cranial up here where my pointer is. And I'm going to start labeling these things and then whatever. Okay, this is the bladder. The bladder always has like some little tip on it and it's usually facing in a cranial direction and maybe I should say always facing cranial but now this reproductive tract I've got it like spread out on a table so it's not really what it looks like in the animal and oftentimes the gross anatomy is depicted from the side and I just don't like that when you're first starting to learn this okay now there's bilaterally symmetrical uh, structures, right? So I put ureter here on this one. This is going to be coming from the kidney, but then this is the ureter too. So I'm only going to label one side. Be aware of that. Okay, well then the testicle, I'll put this one over here. If you talk about one of the testicles, you can say the testis. If you're talking about both of them, testes. Okay. And then that structure that's attached to the testicle, but not a part of it per se, is the epididymis. So that's down here, epididymis, E-P-I-D-I-D-Y-M-I-S. That's how I learned how to spell it. So here's the testicle. And then my blue little squiggly lines, we're going to call that the head of the epididymis. And as it runs along the side here, that's the body. And this bulging area, like we saw before, is called the tail of the epididymis. And this whole epididymis stores and matures sperm. All the sperm we're going to find out in uh, our reproduction to the histology made in the seminiferous tubules. All the sperm gather and then leave the top of the testis and then follow this epididymis. And it takes many, many days, probably weeks to make the journey. Okay. Then we have the vas deferens, and I'm running out of room here. I'm going to put it right there because the vas deferens then is where the epididymis ends, and then this tube that carries sperm to this part. That's all the vas deferens. If you've heard of an animal or a person having a vasectomy, 
this is the structure that's cut because then you prevent sperm from traveling from where they're made to leaving the body. Okay, so then the penis is here. I'm going to move that up a little bit because then I've got to bring over the label, the urethra. And I'll put that over here and maybe, well, I guess I'll put it right here and then explain what it is. The urethra is this inner lumen tube that carries urine and sperm out the penis. Okay, so when an animal urinates, the bladder contracts, there's some sphincters that relax, and then urine is expelled this way. When sperm leaves the reproductive tract, the sperm comes up here from both directions and then leaves this way, but they all leave the urethra. These two little eye-looking things here remind me to tell you that the ureter usually comes in behind the bladder and then empties into the bladder here. So urine is going to be carried by peristalsis from the kidney by the ureter and then comes in behind this picture and urine then gets put in the bladder and we know the, the bladder can stretch. Now I'm going to quickly show you the drawings that people have made of the tom, which is the male cat, and then the dog, which is sometimes called the stud, and then the stallion. Please pause these and digest them as you want. I'm going to save space. But I did find a mistake on this one, which I thought was interesting. There's always mistakes. I mis make mistakes too. So this is a cat laying in dorsal recumbency. If there's a table here, then the backbone of the animal is here. So this is dorsal, this is ventral, this is caudal, this is cranial, right? We're getting a side view. There's the bladder, there's the kidney, they've got the ureter labeled. Then there's the testicle. Remember, the testicle is always outside the body cavity because it needs a little cooler environment. Sperm then will leave the epididymis sooner or later and go into this tube and then dump into that urethra but look at this drawing labeled it ureter so now you know that's incorrect that's the urethra okay so i thought that was kind of interesting maybe what i'll do is just go like this okay great okay but you can read the rest of it this is a tomcat there's the penis and you know that i just blotted out uh their wrong label and this is the urethra this is the urethra, remember? And then they show a prostate. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit, what the prostate is. Now I'd like to show you uh, the dog, male dog reproductive tract that somebody has drawn and labeled. Maybe we'll quickly make sure the labels are right. I usually try that. Okay, and you can orientate yourself, of course. This is cranial. This is caudal. There's the testis. They've got it labeled, you know, singular, right? epididymis, the scrotum, the vas deferens, they're also calling that the sperm duct, that's fine, whatever. They get, got the urethra right, there's the prostate gland, the bladder, the penis has a bone in it, they've labeled it penis bone, oftentimes it's called the os penis, and uh, that's where I want to point out on that. Now the male horse is called the stallion, and look, let's look at somebody's drawing. It's They're getting a little complicated. That's why at first, if you've never known the plumbing of this stuff, then my concept drawing, I'm going to brag about it. Anyway, uh, you can see your, uh, orientate yourself. Cranial, caudal, dorsal, ventral, right? There's the testis, body of the epididymis, uh, tail of the epididymis, the shaft of the penis. They've got some other glands beside the prostate label. There's the prostate, but look at vesicular gland, bulbal urethral gland, and then the ampulla. I want you to remember those four. Ampulla, vesicular, prostate, and bulbal urethra. Those are all what's called accessory sex glands. They're exocrine glands. During ejaculation, they contribute fluid to the sperm. So now I've alluded to the fact that the testis gives up sperm and the accessory sex glands give up fluid. And I've got a little formula here to remember. So semen, that's the whole composite 
that's ejaculated is made up of sperm from the testis and all the solutions from the accessory sex glands collectively are called seminal plasma. So seminal plasma comes from this gland, this gland, this gland, and the ampulla. Now, not all of those were labeled in the dog and cat because not every male has the four possible accessory sex glands. Now, I found this nice figure here and I'm not going to talk about it much, but it shows the comparative actually location of the testes, the orientation I pr probably should say, uh, dorsal, ventral, cranial caudal in an animal. Like for example, the ox, that's really like the bull. The testes are more up and down, like in the sheep. But then the pig, they're more horizontal. The horse is also horizontal. The dog, somewhat horizontal. And then the cat. And to help you know these terms, that's the head of the epididymis, that's the body, so B is body, and T is tail. Now, we've seen drawings and maybe one actual picture of testes, so let me uh, bring these out again. Remember, we saw those before, and I just want to make sure you understand that, you know, this is the testis, this round, oblong portion. The epididymis is attached. You could actually take a scissor and cut it where I'm showing you the red, and cut it all the way up that way without cutting the testis. So those are testicles right out of the animal. That's what they look like. And then if you happen to cut open a testicle, then you see this red parenchyma. I'm going to show you how to spell that. Here's the testes on the other side that's intact, hasn't been cut. A lot of blood vessels. Here's the tail of the epididymis, right? Here's the body. We're not seeing the head. It's underneath there. But there's a couple terms, of course, I want to show you. And I did say parenchyma. Now, parenchyma is that red part. Parenchyma means the functional part of any, actually, tissue. You could have liver parenchyma, kidney parenchyma. It's usually the what makes the tissue. And in this case, the parenchyma is definitely the seminiferous tubules, which we're going to get to in the next lesson. But there's another term that's the opposite of parenchyma, and that's stroma. Stroma is the connective portions of the tissue, and they're not really functioning to make the product of whatever the tissue makes, but they're actually very important as far as providing structure. But those two terms are almost like antonyms of, antonyms of each other. And of course, we're always looking for terms and uh, unique things. And I found this beautiful uh, picture. I think it's dog testicles. I'm almost positive. The scrotal testis was found in the scrotum, of course. You can see this is dog. There's the testes. There's the epididymis. You can see where you could actually cut that away. The only place it's attached is the opposite from the tail up here. Of course, there's a lot of blood vessels. But then this animal had an undescended testicle. So whether they found it, exactly how they found it, I'm not sure, but it was in the body cavity, and this was in the right place. Look at, usually the undescended testicle is smaller. It probably isn't making fertile sperm, but that, there's no guarantees about that. It might even be making some hormone. So, of course, we got some terms here. When an animal has at least one testicle in the body cavity, that's where they were formed in the fetus, but they're supposed to descend into the scrotum around the time of birth. Then you would call that animal a cryptorchid. This would be in the male, right? So if an animal is a cryptorchid, you could say it is, has cryptorchidism, okay? Now, if both testes are retained in the body, you could call the animal bilaterally cryptorchid. The picture on the left shows a unilateral cryptorchid animal. Here are those fine illustrations I used. Thanks a lot.